Good morning. I'd like to welcome you to worship on this beautiful Sunday morning. I'm Pastor Nathan Keith in Trinity Lutheran Church in Larimer, Wyoming. Welcome you to worship. All of us have maybe been a little stressed this week watching the news and watching the election unfold. And I just want to share one reality that I have as a pastor. You know, as a pastor, with all those people that we have in our pews, we have Republicans, we have Democrats, we have independents, we have people who are skeptics, we have people who don't vote. We have the whole gamut. Um, and what I get to do is serve all of them across all opinions. And it's a challenging ministry sometimes because many of you want me to have the same viewpoint as you, but the beautiful thing, when we worship together with all those different opinions, we worship as one people, one people in Christ. That on this altar rail, as we come for communion, we worship and we commune as one people. And that is one tremendous, beautiful gift of the gospel and the beautiful gift of Christ. That with all these different opinions that we have with business or whatever topic that you want to put into the election, that we worship as one people. And maybe this is something that we really need to share with our communities, all the communities in which we live, that here in worship, in the truest form of worship, we worship as one people. So please join us. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Holy One, we confess that we are not awake for you. We are not faithful in using your gifts. We forget the least of our siblings. We do not see your beautiful image in one another. We are infected by sin that divides your beloved community. Open our hearts to your coming. Open your eyes to see you in our neighbor and open our hands to serve your creation. Amen. So beloved, we are God's children and Jesus, our beloved, opens the door to us. Through Jesus this morning, you are forgiven. By Jesus, you are welcome. In Jesus, you are called to rejoice. Let us then live in the promises from the foundation of the world. Amen.
The Lord be with you and also with you. We pray our prayer of the day together. O oh, great and loving God, your wisdom is radiant and unfading, easily discerned by all who seek your way. When faithful men and women live in love and work for justice, heaven breaks into earth. Give us the grace to live confidently and expectantly, trusting that the Lord of history, who has been approaching from all eternity, comes into life continually with compassion, redemption, and hope. Amen. Our first lesson is the, from the first chapter of Corinthians. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge of every kind. Just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end, so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Now I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you be in agreement, that there be no divisions among you, but that you be united in the same mind and the same purpose. Here ends the reading. We will read responsively parts of Psalm 78. Give my ear, O my people, to my teaching. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings from the old, things that we have heard and known, that our ancestors have told us. We will not hide them from their children. We will tell to the coming generation the glorious deeds of the Lord and his might, the wonders that he has done. He has established a decree in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our ancestors to teach to their children, that the next generation might know them, the children yet unborn, and rise up and tell them to their children, so that they should set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments. The second lesson is from the third chapter of Colossians. As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bear with one another and if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other, just as the Lord has forgiven you, so that you also must forgive. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in the one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, Teach and admonish one another in all wisdom, and with gratitude in your hearts, sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Here ends the reading.
The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 13th chapter. Jesus says, I give you a new commandment that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, where are you going? Jesus answered, where am I going? You cannot follow me now, but you will follow afterward. Peter said to him, Lord, why can I not follow you now? I will lay down my life for you. And Jesus answered, will you lay down your life for me? Very truly, I tell you, before the cock crows, you will have denied me three times. The Gospel of our Lord. Well, grace and peace be unto you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So people of God, my friends in Christ, please take a deep breath. Take a deep breath and know that our God is holding this world. You remember that old song, he's got the whole world in his hands? It's a great song. I remember singing that when I was a kid. Take a deep breath with us this morning in our worship and remind yourself that God has your life, that God is holding this world in the palm of God's hands. You see, as God holds the world together, we know then that we are Christians first that we are Christians first. And the gift of being in a particular country wherever you are in this world comes second. It is that we are not Americans first and Christians second, that we are Christians first. And the role of our faith, especially during this week, impacts how we live as Americans. So I did not follow the Revised Common Lectionary today. I chose uh, the text that we have today that our readers read to hopefully center us during this time. I have a friend in seminary that often says on his Facebook feed or whatever he's doing or whenever he's preaching that love wins. That's kind of his coin phrase. Maybe it should be his epitaph, that love wins. That Jesus didn't bring, didn't come into this world to bring more suffering and hatred. Jesus didn't come to bring us war that Jesus was sent into this world to show us how to love, to give us love, and to invite us into living a life of love. Love wins. You see, some of those on the ballots for every level of government lost this week, and some of those, some people on those ballots won. We all know some losers, and we all know some winners, and many of us know them personally. So maybe Jesus would say to those whose names are on the ballot this week that your life matters more than a vote. It does. That you matter to God more than the number of votes that you have received. And to all those who have voted, the millions of people who have voted in this country, it's a gift. But remember that your life matters more than that single vote you give. You see, as a pastor of this congregation, you voted to call me to extend a call for me to serve here. In every congregation that I have served and in the ELCA, the congregation votes whether they want to call that pastor or not. And it's a really awkward space for us as pastors because people are voting on us and they really don't know us. Yes, they might know a few things, but they don't know us like we know each other today. So really, it's hard to take it personal. I mean, if I go to a congregation, I know that there's 10 people that did not vote for me. You wonder what you did wrong or what they didn't see in your leadership. That faith and following Jesus then goes beyond our popularity contest that we have in this world. That your life matters more than any votes that you have received and your life matters more than those who got into office. Yet we still pray for those who are in office. Whether you voted for them or not, we pray. You see, love wins. 
I mean, Jesus says it this way, that I give you a new commandment, that you love one another just as I have loved you. You also should love one another. I mean, anybody with uh, uh, any knowledge of history knows this, that, that violence brings more violence. We know this. We also know that dropping bombs just makes the other side drop bombs, that oppression keeps the system of oppression going, that anger brings more anger, that snarky Facebook posts just bring more snarky Facebook posts. And unfortunately, self-righteousness behavior just brings on more self-righteousness behavior. But love is a commandment. Love is a commandment from our God, Jesus, And the Apostle Paul defines it this way, God's people clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Clothe yourselves, meaning this, that as you walk around this world, those garments are hanging on you. They're a part of you. They go wherever you go. That compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience are a part of who you are as a follower of Jesus. And he says, forgive one another and let the peace of Christ rule your hearts. The peace. And the Apostle Paul, the Apostle Paul's prayer then is this, that they let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Let it dwell in you richly. And as I sit as a Christian, as a person of faith, and also a person who voted this week, friends in Christ, is this possible? I wonder if we have migrated away from that deep faith in our God and allowed our own self-interest to take over. So I need to remind you this week that love wins. That love is the only thing powerful enough to transform us in this world. You see, Paul in 1 Corinthians says that God is faithful, that God is so faithful that God has not given up on us yet, that God, when God God created you in the book of Genesis, right, and we hear God say that after he created all these living things, God said, it is good. And God is faithful so that, that God has not given up on us as a people of God. So Paul says, by the name of Jesus, let there be no divisions among you, but that you are united in the same mind and the same purpose. (sighs) To be united. You see, as a pastor, I see churches today struggling, struggling to find their voice that they're either lifting up a conservative voice in these pulpits, filling up their pews with conservative people, or they're lifting up a liberal voice in their pulpits and filling their pews with liberal people. That, my friends, is not Christ's church. And it's not a vision. It's never been a vision for God's church. That's not unity. Unity. So Richard Rohr, a a great theologian, wrote this this week. I want to share these words with you. He writes, In our ugly and injurious present political climate, it has become all too easy to justify fear-filled and hateful thoughts, words, and actions in defense against the other side. We project our anxiety elsewhere and misdiagnose the real problem, the real evil forever exchanging it for smaller and seemingly more manageable problems. The over-defended ego always sees and hates and attacks in other people its own faults, the parts of ourselves that we struggle to acknowledge, that we do not want to give way on important moral issues, but this often means we don't want to give way on our need to be right and superior and also in control. It is our deep attachment to this false or manufactured self that leads us into our greatest illusions. And here it is, that most of us do not see things as they are. We see things as we are. That we don't see things as they are. We see things as we are. And maybe 
This is the true disaster of the fall of our human sin, that we see life through a very narrow lens. We don't see life as it is. We see life only as we are. So friends of Christ, let us live the gospel of Jesus and celebrate the great diversity with the wonderful hope that we can live in unity, that we can have unity in Christ. And when we have unity in Christ, we can look at the world with love. I mean, when we see things as we are, when we only see the world as we are, of course we can't look at the world or other people who are different from you with love. It's almost impossible. I mean, when we see the world only as we are, then we perceive others as a threat, not as a gift. So today, I'm inviting you into this deep, hard, hard spiritual work of seeing Christ in the other. I mean, it's an old Christian tradition. It's an old Christian thought that we can see Christ in the other, that we are invited to see Christ in the other because God created us all. So we need to start looking at the world as God sees the world because Christ is love. That the people who are driving you crazy or making you frustrated are people that God also loves, that God has also redeemed. So this means that whatever we find ourselves, whenever we find ourselves in despair over whatever it is, you can still look at those around you with love. And Psalm 78 says this, Give ear, O my people, incline your ears to the words of my mouth. And we need these kinds of ears today. I need this kind of ear today, constantly, so that I can hear grace, compassion, and love. I need a different pair of ears because so often all I hear today is hatred. Do you remember the movie The Green Mile? It's kind of a unique movie, but there's a a scene that really sticks with me. I remember the scene before John Coffey is electrocuted. Remember, he's sitting in the cell, and he's weeping. And John Coffey said this, he said, I'm tired of being ugly to each other. I'm tired of people being ugly to each other. It feels like pieces of glass in my head. I'm tired of all the times I've wanted to help and couldn't. I'm tired of being in the dark. Mostly, it's the pain. There's too much. If I could end it, I would, but I can't. And with all the pieces of glass that are stirring in our heads, Jesus came to end it all on the cross. That all the suffering, all the hatred, all the war, all the disease is resurrected on the cross. And what we find is an empty tomb. Love wins. So let us live like it says in Psalm 78. It says that I will open my mouth. I will speak of the things our ancestors told us. We will not hide them from our children. We will tell the coming generation of the glorious deeds of our God that they will then set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but that they will keep the commandments. The commandments to love one another as I have loved you. Amen.
Friends in Christ, let us share our faith with one another with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. So longing for Christ's reign to come among us, we pray for the outpouring of God's power on the church, the world, and on all in need. O holy God, rouse us to deep praise as we gather for worship this day. Enliven our worship with sincere and heartfelt song and prayers. Sustain the work of all of our church musicians and artists who lead us in praise and prayer. We especially thank you for all of our musicians who have been a part of our worship in our history. We especially give you thanks for Targi, for Valentina. We give you thanks, God, for our choir, our worship band. We give thanks for all those who brought special music and shared the gift of song and the, the different gift of instruments they have played. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. And Holy Creator, surprise and delight in us with the beauty of the world that you have made. Bless the work of landscapers and architects and artists whose work invites us into harmonious living with your creation. And God, we especially thank you for the gift of our backcountry, the gift of our mountains, our big, beautiful blue skies, and the wonderful stars. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. And holy God, let justice roll down like waters over this world. Reign over the courtrooms of every land. In the hearts of those who guard the law and also those who stand accused of crimes, be present in cases where we long for both justice and mercy to prevail. And wonderful God, we pray for all of our elected leaders. We give you thanks for their leadership. We ask that they would lead with compassion and justice and mercy. And for all those who came up short in the ballots this year, we give thanks for their life as well. Continue to guide them and send your Holy Spirit upon them. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. And Holy Companion, console those who feel lonely or abandoned. Share the hours of those who live and eat alone. Comfort those who have few friends or who struggle with their identity and place in this world. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. And Holy Protector, our God, be with all those observing Veterans Day. Guard the lives of our active duty and retired military personnel. Comfort all who mourn those who have died in the line of duty. So heal the wounds, both physical and mental, experienced by service members. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. And wonderful God, we ask that you be with all those in our faith community who are struggling, who are recovering from surgery. God, we pray for Tari, Tom, and Bev, and Sharon, and Tom. We pray for those who are in the nursing homes and the assisted living centers or in the hospital. We give thanks for those who are working so hard in their vocations to care for us, our nurses and doctors and hospital staff and administrations. Be near to them during a stressful time. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. And holy and immortal God, we pray in thanksgiving for the lives of all who have died. Remind us of the frailty and shortness of our own lives and inspire us to use them for the building up of your kingdom. We especially pray for Valentina this morning at the death of her mother. God, we give thanks for her life. We ask that you would watch over her family as they mourn this loss. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. So receive our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, until that day when you gather all creation around your throne, where you will reign forever and ever. Amen.
The peace of the Lord be with you all and also with you. Please share signs of God's peace with those around you. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our God thanks and praise. We now enter into a time of communion like I have been sharing in this entire worship service that we as God's people, as diverse as we are in every way, this is a meal that unifies us. So I invite you to get out your, your crackers or your bread, your juice and wine, and to lift up the elements for the words of institution that we share together so that we can be unified. You see, we are gathering in person in our sanctuary, anywhere between 20 and 30 people calm. But as we worship together online and also in person, we still do this together. That we pray for those listening online, and I hope and pray that you are praying for us as well that we are one body, the one body of Christ. So with that, in the night in which he's betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. So, Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. So at this time, I invite you to take your bread or whatever you have for communion this morning and to share that with everyone around you and to say these words together, body of Christ given for you, body of Christ given for you. And after everybody is done, Take the juice of the wine and to share that with those around you and to say, blood of Christ shed for you, blood of Christ shed for you. And now, brothers and sisters in Christ, may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace now and forever. Amen. We pray together. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift, in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another, for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So, Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, keep you in his light and truth and love, now and forever. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Yeah, you'll leave.